Hello everybody and welcome to this video chronologically chronicling Conan of Robert E. Howard. Um Yes. So today we are doing oh let me let me scooch. We are doing Pool of the Black Ones. And that was the book right there. <clears throat> now, there are a few things about this book um, that need to be talked about right away before anybody freaks out. The black ones that the story refers to um, are not humans of African descent that they are talking about. They are otherworldly, um, demonic uh, creatures that, and we'll we'll get to them in a little bit. But um, it's it's not that. <clears throat> um, I've heard some people try to claim that, and if if you read the story, it's very very clear that that is not at all what is going on here. Next, this story is a lot of fun, and I think it gets a bit of grief for, um, I don't know, like just not being as good as some of the other Conan stories. And this isn't my favorite Conan story, I think in more modern times, too, there is a beef with the um, female damsel in this story. That she is not um, as strong of a character as um, some of the other female leads in Conan Tales. And that's fine with me because people are different. And if you have the same character in every fucking story, it's going to get so fucking repetitive that you could almost telegraph exactly what this new character you've never encountered is going to say. But I've heard people complain, like, she's no Belit, obviously. She's no Yasmina, obviously. Like, um... She is a completely different character than um, either of those. Um, and even um, Natalia in um, The Slithering Shadow, like, she's nothing like her either. It's like, I really think Robert E. Howard has done a fairly good job of creating female characters that aren't cookie cutter and exactly the same. Um, I feel like a lot of writers fall into that. And honestly, it's probably why Lovecraft didn't really write women at all. Because, I mean, if you read his stories, he could barely write a male character that was any different than any other character from another story. So, um, give credit where credit's due. Now, this story does resemble a bit of um, Queen of the Black Coast with just the, like, Conan swimming aboard a vessel and everyone, like, ready to kill him. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to show you. He fucking punches his fucking dude in the face and kills him. Snaps his neck. Jesus Christ. Just some awesome crap there. Okay, now, this whole bit with the pirate ship and everything like that, this part of the story, I really dig a lot. Like, all of this. Even up to the point where they find the island. I think it's strong, it's good, it's action-packed, it's punchy, the whole fucking thing. Now, where this story gets... I don't want to say convoluted, I don't know what it is. Once they get to the island and start dealing with the Black Ones doesn't really do it for me the way other Conan stories do. And um, 
the big, like, <gasps> of the pool is they have this green pool, and when they put people into it, um, they come out as little figurines that they stand on a bookcase somewhere. And maybe the black ones hang out and go, oh man, look at this cool little figure I have. Oh, remember what happened? Yeah, we, we, we got him and we put him in the pool. Uh, that was pretty funny. I remember that. That was cool. I'm like, yeah. Neat figure, though, huh? So, whatever. Like, it's it's a weird... Like, the idea of it is just almost laughable. And I'm wondering if that premise is the thing that makes people, like, hate this story. You have... Um, these like crazy fucking demons and their big master plan is to make action figures like what the fuck um but anyway i'm gonna get to the black ones in a minute here but like to bring the story through to an end before i get into what i want to talk about conan fucking destroys everybody and everything as they're running back to the ship, the the last dude that dies, the leader, says some fucking words. And the pool, like, is going to destroy itself or whatever. And this uh, liquid snake thing starts chasing them and chasing out to the boat. And then the boat finally gets away before it can get to it. And then Conan's like, shit. I got myself a pirate ship and a bunch of pirates. I'm going to go do some fucking pirating. Look out. Um, and, you know, whatever the end. There is also some cool shit in this story between Conan and the captain of the ship that I think is some interesting back and forth kind of shit. And especially when we are in the thoughts of the captain... And, like, what he is trying to um, do and um, the the schemes he's trying to um, pull off. It, it's cool. And I like the pace of this story. Like, the way... I love it when Conan is, like, right there when the story starts. I fucking love that. I absolutely get so annoyed when I'm reading backstory and backstory and backstory about all this fucking shit, which is great world building, don't get me wrong, but like, when I'm reading an action adventure fantasy, like, I want action, and I want adventure, and I want fantasy, and I want to learn about shit at the same time Conan does. Like, I, I want to live vicariously through my hero, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so, those are the stories that tend to, like stay close to my heart, which is why the first part of this story to me is so good. Like I'm in, I mean, I mean the whole story is good, you know, it, it's just, it's a silly little thing, I think. But what I really wanted to talk to you guys about, about this story is, um, something really interesting. Now this could be complete nutter bullshit, but I think it's kind of not. And what it is, is that this story came out in the fall or winter, fall winter of 1933 in Weird Tales magazine. Now, during this period, Lovecraft and Howard were in communication. Lovecraft has a story called Dreams in the Witch House that I have recently, I mean, recently compared to other videos of the Cthulhu Mythos I've done, I have recently done a video on that. And it might just be because I read these so close together that it, like, clicked in my head. But so Dreams in the Witch House was written, I believe, in the beginning of 1932 and was published... In nineteen, in the summer of nineteen thirty-three. Okay. Now Lovecraft usually sent copies of his stories out to his peers to get like criticism on them before he sent them out. 
if he sent him out at all, because a lot of times, as you know, his friends, like, Lovecraft's like, I don't like this story anymore. Ugh. And his friends are like, well, we're going to send it out anyway for you, you stupid piece of shit. And um, that's how a lot of his stories got picked up. But anyhow, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the description of a very popular um, entity in the Cthulhu mythos, Nyarlathotep, in Dreams in the Witch House, is eerily similar to the description of the Black Ones in Pool of the Black Ones. And I'm sitting here going, okay, so I know that in a lot of Howard's original manuscripts, some stories had very close ties to the Cthulhu mythos and things that Lovecraft was doing. And I know that when El Sprague de Camp got a hold of Howard's work, he kind of ditched that shit. Okay? I don't know if this is one of those times. I don't know if... Um, cause like what I read seemed very, in here, seemed very, um, similar to the description of Nyarlathotep. And so if this is the case where Howard was influenced or was inspired by Lovecraft's, um, short story, did fucking Howard make an island of Nyarlathotepic creatures? Like, is that a fucking thing? Like, I always thought there was just Nyarlathotep. I, I never even thought for a hot minute that there could be an island full of them who make action figures out of people. But making action figures out of people, honestly, doesn't sound that far off from something Nyarlathotep would do. But then at the same time... Um, did Conan kill Nyarlathotep? Was he the one who spouted the the verse to um, destroy everything they had there? Um, it, it was just a weird thought. And I just was like going... I, I was just like completely like losing my mind. Because I've read Pool of the Black Ones numerous times and never once thought, oh... This could definitely be Nyarlathotep and a bunch of other Nyarlathotepic creatures. I never thought that. So having that in my head now, reading that, I was like, this is like a whole new story. This is a whole new thing now. So I don't even know if this is considered one of the Howard stories that, um, one of the Howard Conan stories that like draws ties with the Cthulhu mythos. But if you know any of these questions, if you know the answers to these, let me know down below. I would love to, even if the conversation is so what if, like, I'm down. Let's have this conversation because that will be a fun one. So anyway, um, make sure you click the join button and um, you'll be getting extra content and extra live streams. And other than that, I will see you guys later. Bye bye.